This is what college football looks like, and it's the same everywhere. Good times eating, drinking, and we all sort of pretend like we know what the hell's gonna happen. So even though I'm in New York and not on campus, all season long, I'm eating, drinking, and figuring out what the hell's gonna happen with games of the week. This is Easy Call. This is Randolph Beer. It's championship week. Beer nerdery, food nerdery, magic. Let's go make some sweet college football and food love. Oh yeah. All right, it's championship week. I'm in a very beautiful setting. There's reclaimed wood everywhere. I just want to live here. This is fantastic. But keys for Oklahoma in this game. Who starts the quarterback? Is it Blake Bell? Is it Trevor Knight? What are they able to do? Are they able to get into a rhythm? Number two, the tempo in this game for Oklahoma is going to be huge. Can they get moving quickly? It's going to be cold. The Oklahoma State defense is very good. Can they get on a roll against a really good Oklahoma State defense? And finally, it's a road game. The Sooners, the road, a big game. We've seen this story probably way too often. Can they be focused? It's a nice win on the road against Kansas State a couple of weeks ago. This is an even tougher challenge for the Sooners. Bob Stoops on the road. It's going to be rough. Can they be focused? Keys for Oklahoma State. The speed of the Cowboys, especially as they get healthier at the receiver positions. Josh Stewart, Tracy Morick. How can they stretch that field against a, a still pretty beat up Oklahoma defense? That's going to be big. The defensive front for Oklahoma State. Can they force Trevor Knight and or Blake Bell to win this game through the air, which I don't really think they can do. If they're throwing the ball 30, 35 times, that's a bad sign for Oklahoma. Oklahoma, great sign for Oklahoma State. And final key for Oklahoma State, it's a letdown situation. How well can this coaching staff force this team to focus and be ready to win the Big 12? They've done it before. This is probably the most complete, probably best Oklahoma State team we've seen in a long time, if not ever. They need to avoid the letdown spot. I'm going to go in the cold temperature, 34 to 20 Oklahoma State. I think they pull away later on in the game. Yeah, they cover that 10 and a half point spread. Look at this. Burger, waffle fries sits atop the fry power rankings with Curly. You got bacon under the cheddar, potato bun. You got homemade aioli. We've got a barrier sasquash. Squash. Butternut squash, green peppercorns, beer, cold, crisp, burger. I mean, let's set the palate. Ooh, sweet and peppery. Cooked perfectly, seasoned real well. The cheddar's oozy. That's a great, great bar burger. All right, next game. This one's a huge one. The SEC Championship game in Atlanta, Missouri, Auburn, who really could have seen this coming, especially last year with Missouri being as down as they were. But this is going to be a fun one. Auburn, point and a half favorites. Huge win off of Alabama. Keys for Missouri, though. First, that defensive front, especially against that Auburn run game, needs to be sound, hitting the keys, hitting the gaps every single play because you screw up once, that's Nick Marshall for 45 yards. Next key, the running back position. Still not crazy about Auburn's defense, still crazy about Henry Josie. You mix those two things together, it could be a very nice day, especially in a dome, especially indoors. And finally, they have two NFL caliber wide receivers in DGB and LaDamian Washington. How well can that offensive staff put them in a position to succeed, one-on-one -on -one matchups, putting them in a position to succeed in space against an Auburn defense? Still not crazy about it, especially with that secondary. Keys for Auburn in this game, Coaching. Gus Malzahn and his staff have to be able to avoid a letdown spot for this team, get this team focused. They're going to be focused and ready, but man, the emotion after the Iron Bowl, it's going to be sort of hurtful in the beginning of this game, potentially. Next key, the turnover battle. Missouri is fantastic on both sides of the ball, both staying clean on offense and turning the ball over on defense, getting teams dirty. Auburn themselves needs to be able to protect the ball well and need to take chances against a Missouri offense that really does a good job keeping the ball to themselves. And finally, X's and O's for Auburn. They need to be able to adjust against this very good defense. That means picking their spots inside, outside, adjusting on the fly. It's going to be huge. This Missouri team is just so good in all phases of the game. I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go Missouri here. I think it's an upset pick, even though it's a point and a half spread. 27-24, I like them to win outright. I think Auburn's a great story, a fantastic story. The Iron Bowl was ridiculous, but I think Missouri's too sound in too many phases of football. I'm, I'm going Tigers. Wow, SEC champ Missouri. Weird to say. This is not weird to say. Fried Brussels sprouts with maple and bacon situations atop. I'm so happy right now. Okay, back out west, Pac-12 championship game. This is nice because it's in a campus site. Arizona State hosting Stanford. Arizona State three and a half points against a very good Stanford team. Keys for the Cardinal. First of all, Kevin Hogan, the quarterback position. He's been only so-so, really of no. Wasn't that good against Notre Dame? This is a good Arizona State defense. Can he get in a rhythm? How is he gonna do in passing downs if it gets to that point? That's a huge question for the Cardinal right now. Next key, the defensive front for Stanford, especially going against kind of a below average Arizona State offensive line. They allow tackles for losses at a ton of points in games. They allow sacks. This is a, a unit that can be taken advantage of. They need to play. Trent Murphy needs to play strong. And final key, 
coaching for Stanford. This is a Stanford team. Both of their losses have come on the road after big games at home. Last week they had Notre Dame, big physical defense. It's a pattern. Can he get this team focused going on the road? It's a legitimate question in 2013. Keys for Arizona State, health. DJ Foster is now the workhorse running back with Marion Grice probably out. Looked really good in the Territorial Cup, but this Stanford defense is a different animal. How well will he do getting 20, 25 carries? It's a question. Next, the defensive front for Arizona State going against a Stanford team that's very happy to just run it between the tackles until you stop them. This is a good team. There's good personnel on this defense. They've been very... God, they've been outstanding against the run for the most part. You have Carl Bradford, Will Sutton, Davon Coleman. A lot of talent there. How well can they fare? And finally, coaching. After that UCLA game, which they scored this many points in the second half, it's a question. Can they adjust to? It's a really good Stanford coaching staff. Can Todd Graham and his staff really put Arizona State in a position to win a close, tight game with huge Rose Bowl implications? Still a question for me. I'm going Arizona State. I'm going the home team here. We'll say 27-23. I think they're four points better and barely cover. I just... I like this ASU team. I like the, the number of ways they can win. I'm going to win in a very specific way right now. Double fried chicken thighs. Kind of rhymes. You got house aioli. House aioli. Look at you, double fried. Just staring at me. Oh. You got the crispiness maintaining the juicy integrity of the middle. Why single fry anything? That's what I ask you, America, when you can double. All right, it's let's ACC let's time, let's ACC championship in Charlotte. This one, unexpected matchup probably, beginning of the season. Duke, Florida State, Florida State, not surprisingly, 28 and a half point favorites. That's a lot of, four touchdown favorites in the championship game. But, miracle season for Duke, magical. Here are the keys for the Blue Devils. First quarterback position, Anthony Boone, of course, has been back from his injury for a little while. Mobile, got to get into a rhythm early on against his Florida State defense. Fill that offense that has weapons, Jamison Crowder, with confidence. That's a big thing. Number two, luck for Duke. I don't want to sort of sugarcoat this. They need bounces all over the field. They need turnovers, weird field position stuff, maybe an unfortunate injury or 17. They need something to happen. And finally, the defensive front, which does have some talent and has played well more often than not, they need to play at like 235% capacity. This is a team that has, this is the game of their lives. They need to collapse pockets on every single play. Then there's a chance. And for Florida State, keys are pretty simple. First, that defensive front. It's going to be an overmatched offensive line for Duke. Swarm, but don't overrun anything. Duke does have a mobile quarterback in Anthony Boone who can turn third and eight into first downs. Next key, the offensive line is going to go up against this Duke defensive line that's good and scrappy, but not terrific against the run. It should be Devonta Freeman all day, all day. And the last key, speed for Florida State. Duke does a pretty decent job against the pass, keeping receivers in front of them. If you can get the ball into the hands of Rashad Green and Kelvin Benjamin pretty quickly, let them operate in the open field, that should mitigate the success that Duke has had pretty consistently. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Duke here to cover the points. I don't think Jimbo Fisher's running the score up against David Cutcliffe. I don't think it's in the best interest of the ACC to have like a 70 to 10 ACC championship game. I think it, it gets out of hand probably early in the second half, but 38-13 feels about right. This definitely feels right. We've got Elote. I'm big on corn. I'm a corn man. So we've got, we've got spicy sauce, we've got avocado, we have cilantro, cotija cheese. You're dressing up corns. You're speaking my language. Mm. Oh, that's good. Doesn't get in your teeth. Another big thing. So, what's up, ladies? <coughs> Last game, quite literally a big one. Big Ten Championship. I'll stop with the puns. Indianapolis, Indiana hosting the whatever they're calling the Dome now. Michigan State, Ohio State. Ohio State five and a half point favorites. This is a game that we've been looking forward to for a long time. A lot of strength versus strength in this game. Indoors, it's going to be a fun one. Keys for Ohio State. The running back position. Carlos Hyde is an absolute monster. He makes that offense go. How much can he do against a really good Michigan State front seven? It's going to be key. If he gets tackled two, three yards deep every single time, not good for Ohio State. Next key, the defensive front against a Michigan State offensive line. It's fine, nothing terrific, but it's Connor Cook, a quarterback that can get rattled. It's a first-year guy. They need to get after him early and often because they sack quarterbacks all over the place. And finally, turnovers and preventing them against a really, really excellent Michigan State defense because if they give anything away, especially in the second half, Michigan State is very good at just, you know, just sitting and like, yeah, it's 17-7 and that's how it's going to end. That's how good their defense is. Ohio State needs to stay clean. Keys for Michigan State, tempo. And by tempo, I mean slow tempo. They need to figure out a way to keep this Michigan State defense rested for a really high-powered Ohio State offense and just worry about moving the ball 10 yards at a time. Next key, the defensive front, the big, angry, terrific defensive front. They need to be able to keep Carlos Hyde in check 
Keep Braxton Miller in the pocket, make him beat you with his arm. And he has done that against a lot of teams, but you don't want him running. You don't want Carlos Hyde averaging seven yards a carry. That's bad news for everybody involved for Michigan State. And finally, Connor Cook in the quarterback position. He needs to stay clean and worry about, like I mentioned, 10-yard fields. Give himself easy third downs. Give it to a heavy dose of Jeremy Langford. Keep things short field-wise. I'm going to go Michigan State. Defense is the best unit on the field. I love their ability to adapt and adjust. They're great in the secondary. They're just, they scare the hell out of me. I'm going to say Michigan State outright, 24-21. God, I have Missouri and Michigan State winning giant conferences. And now, Molotov cocktail, which is probably, and I'm stirring it up, get that extra, extra body, get some extra foam. We're talking about 13% alcohol by volume. Yeah. Ooh, okay, so it's sweet right off the bat. Oh, that doesn't taste like there's a lot of alcohol. That's real dangerous in the greatest possible way. Oh yeah, I've done right by myself. <sighs> oh yeah, noisy Chinatown street, love it. 43, 25, and two on the season. Feel great about my picks, another winning week last week. This week, Oklahoma State, Michigan State, Arizona State, let's do it. Duke's gonna cover, Missouri's gonna win outright. I feel good about everything. Feel great about Randolph beer. Feel even better about that 13% Molotov cocktail coursing through my veins. Go here. I'm going to go figure out what to do with the rest of my day. Molotov.